instruments have taken me many places. The vibraphone and marimba have always created opportunities for musical exchange. I thought many times, why don't I play instruments that, that people use? That, why don't I play instruments that people know what they are? And when I go through these reasons in my head, I never come up with anything that can mean enough to make me try and redirect my passion. After school, your dad came to see me. He said, my son is going to be a scientist, and I don't want you to encourage him any further in his music. We'll take him on a gig, and we'll give him a chance to perform in front of a little audience, and, and then I won't, I'll do as dad said, I won't encourage him anymore. And that was the funny, the funny story connected to the gig was you, we were playing a tune, I can't remember what it was, and you were really excited and you were, and I said, Arthur, take it out. And what I was trying to say to you, that, that was the musician's language that meant, okay, you've played your three choruses, now let's, we're going to finish the tune. And you thought I meant keep going. After studying piano and then mallets during my teens, uh, when it was time to go to college, my folks actually said to me, well, you're not going to be a musician. I went and got a bachelor's in biology. So I would look at the, the structure of cholesterol, trying to figure out where the hydroxyl rings are, and my head's going, and I'm still trying to hold on tight with all my studies which ultimately became impossible. <laughs> because the vibes and marimba are not really part of any normal working musical configuration, it always required me, from when I was a kid even, to either find ways to fit into situations musically or to create my own music. I was invited to play a composition of mine in Brazil. It was a dream of mine to play with an orchestra. The first rehearsal I was anxious because I didn't know how the orchestra would respond to my piece. It was thrilling to hear all the notes coming together but I was still nervous about the concert. Brazil has such a rich musical culture. It felt right that my piece premiered there. an interesting exchange because the vibraphone and marimba are becoming more popular in Brazil. And the rhythmic qualities of Brazilian music has also influenced my own music. I knew that is the first time that an orchestra plays this piece and for us is an honor.
this concert was amazing. It was really. Oh, eu gostei muito da música e em especial da parte para percussão da orquestra. São os intérpretes de um compositor ou falecido, ou já vivo, mas nunca está presente. E ele não, ele passou tudo, a ideia dele, tudo isso ele passou para nós. Vibraphone, I think, was originally called the steel marimba, but the actual vibraphone, which was brought into jazz in the 1920s, got its name because it had a little bit of a different design than the marimbas and the xylophones in the sense that it had this kind of rotating wheel underneath the, uh, the metal keys that created vibrato and thus vibraphone, so kind of a wavering of the sound, a little bit more of an expressive sound. People ask me, you know, what, uh, riding next to on an airplane or something, oh, what do you do? And I say, I play the vibraphone. And nine times out of 10, they'll look at me and say, well, what is that exactly? I think the explanation for the vibraphone's narrow uh, exposure is that it has stayed within jazz music. You rarely see it in classical music rarely see it in pop music, you don't see it on TV, you know, with, with rock bands or pop bands. The marimba you see even less because uh, it not only is used in classical music but only as a solo instrument primarily. It seems we've always had to tell the lay person exactly what it is we play. We're told that it started out as a hole in the ground that would fill up with various levels of rainwater. Anyway, people get confused about xylophone, marimba. So it basically overlaps and dovetails the range of the marimba and extends it up from about its middle on up. Those are show instruments, you know, there are a lot of show pieces that were written back in the 20s and 30s. What is the definition in the Britannica for marimba? And we looked it up. It said, quote, stacks of wood beat upon by savages. This was my debut in Town Hall, New York, in 1956. And that's where I was labeled as the first concert marimbist. This was the marimba orchestra at Northwestern University. Now all of those were Musser instruments and Musser was the conductor. And you see the girl up in the back? She is playing a bass marimba, but the resonators are so long that she has to stand up on a, a bench. These are called tulip shapes. Somebody else gave them that name, but it was my mother who began winding mallets this way because you, you can get, you get up to the, the soft part and you don't have to do it physically. And my goal was to give it prominence, to give it respect, so that it would be placed with any other formal instrument. In the 80s, I decided to take all the new marimba techniques that were around at that time and to write a concerto, a modern concerto, that could demonstrate the potential for the instrument. 
When I wrote the Marimba Concerto at that time, back in the 80s, a lot of, most of the music that have been written was music without melody, without sense of rhythm, everything very modern. I put together a melodic piece people could connect emotionally with the piece. Well, I first started playing with the Philharmonic in 1970, when I was still a student at Juilliard. In terms of first concerti, the uh, marimba got its first in 1940, uh, Paul Creston. Vibes, Boulez, enter Stockhausen, enter Messiaen. Europe took care of this for us. So 1957 and West Side Story, Mr. Leonard Bernstein, speaking of the Philharmonic, incorporates the vibes into that famously and cool. And I'm like, oh, there we go. I mean, I started out on keyboards, so that's how I got to keyboard percussion. But a lot too. of you did also. I did. A lot of most yeah. percussionists start out on drums or drum set, yeah. and then expand into into the harmonic aspect of it all. That's right. That's right. Do you think there's a personality trait that's common to students who pick up percussion? The most are explorers of some kind. I'm playing here tonight. This is uh, a performance I'm doing with Chick Corea, and that's one of my favorite places to play. As a kid, I started playing the vibraphone, and uh, it was 1949. I was six years old and the vibraphone was 20 years old. So there were a lot of things waiting to be discovered. It was great timing on my part and sheer luck that uh, I was born in, in the right era. Arthur, primero, va el maestro Arthur, usted, yeah, wow. And at that festival, in that area of Mexico, which used to be Guatemala, I began to see glimpses of answers to my search for a cultural connection, because I was playing an instrument that everyone on the street knew about. Everyone knew what a marimba was. Geez, I mean, in the central municipal park, the gazebo there was called Marimba Park. The marimba is our national instrument because it's part of our life. In Chiapas, we say the people born with the marimba music and die with the marimba music. Did you grow up in this house? Yeah, yeah, I was even born in this house. You were, physically, you were born, born yeah, exactly, in the house. Yeah, and my father too. And my grandfather uh, bought this house many, many years ago and started making marimbas here. They represent an African marimba player 
and over there, uh, Maya Marina player, I consider that our root in uh -huh. the Mexican Mexican marimba. Originally, remember these uh, instruments were mainly for making rhythm. Now we have a making me rhythm. Rhythm, yeah, yeah. Now we have a melodic instrument with a section for playing melody, right. section for playing chords, and bass too. I could play all day, you better... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and remember the other kind of mallets, very big and soft. Ah, for getting the tone. fundamental yeah, yeah, sound in, yeah, in the yeah, bass yeah. section. It's interesting that the... You mentioned the African instruments having more of a rhythm Exactly. Function. Yeah, I mean, I understand that. And with the Mexican marimba, we have uh, both possibilities, making rhythm, making a bass section and making melody. Yeah. 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 Part yeah. of the evolution of the marimba. The evolution of the marimba. Exactly. And these were made by uh, local sculptors? Exactly. By for, friends for, of yours? Exactly. Here in Chiapas? Yeah, here in Chiapas de Corso. Wow. Yeah. And here we have the Maya marimba player in Mexico and Central America, only in the places where the Maya culture and the African slaves were together, the marimba developed. But mainly in the places where they found the Maya culture, they could make the connection and develop the instrument. Uh -huh. Yeah, not in places, for example, like Cuba or Haiti, where no, there's no, no marimba, the, no marimba no not marimba. a big culture of the marimba. No matter, a very big population of right. people from Africa. Now this, this area of Chiapas, was many years ago part of Guatemala. Yeah, correct? yeah, exactly. And this way we can get little by little until the final, final tone. Listening, and then continue. <laughs> Removing more and more wood. Can I hear it again now? Yeah. It's up a tiny bit. <laughs> Smells great. Yeah, yeah. It's see. from uh, Mexico. Yeah, exactly. From the south of Mexico. South of Mexico. Exactly. I, I always love to see the, the bark here. Yeah. The the bark really gives you the idea that it's a tree. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very very nice the connection between a very rustic piece of wood and the final marimba. Mother Nature gives you. The wood. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> to make the music with. Exactly. To make the sound. Yeah. Approximately eight to ten marimbas a month. Approximately That's 120 in a, a year. year. And so how many years has this factory been making marimbas? A hundred years. A <laughs> hundred years? Yeah, yeah. And he's working my brother. It's not only marimba, it's a lot of richness we have all over the world that we must share. And I think you have experienced that uh, no matter where you have been born, if you arrive to a place where they have a real culture, this culture touches you. Yeah. yeah. Very, very deep inside yourself.
de esta gran marimba orquesta. ¡Vámonos! <risa> What can you do musically to highlight uh, you know, the expressive power of these instruments and reach people with? Being a performer in today's environment is very difficult because the, pl there are far less places to perform. Uh, there's too many of us. I went to Norway to play at the first ever ice festival for ice music instruments. We built a nice xylophone using water from a frozen lake. We're cutting these blocks and they're all bobbing at different rates. There was a rhythm there, boom, 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 boom. This one's coming up, this one's coming down. It was the rhythm of the ice. One, two. One of these things where I just had no idea what was the next step ahead and there were like 30 steps, you know? We cut the blocks and we ended up getting them down the hill on these scooters. They were wrapped in uh, deer skins. So actually, I, I do tune somehow, but I just tune to get the sound, not to get an exact tone. Mm -hmm. mm. Just to make very small adjustments all the time. Too. It's quite a, a large dimension of uh, ice or water. So if you see um, uh, don't know in English uh, the water circle cycle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I guess this this water, these instruments have probably been through thousands of human beings <laughs> and animals, and it's been on Earth for a very long time. So maybe it has a uh, part of uh, someone's soul yeah. <laughs> in there. Also, nice. for me, it goes quite deep. It gets dark there, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The blue hue makes the snow kind of dark blue. I finished the instrument only hours before the concert, so I had no time to get to know them. I knew what the individual bars sounded like, but making music on them together was a complete unknown. I'm having as much playful experience as the audience hearing it because it's entirely new for me. Improvising the music was unique because I'd never heard the sounds before. In this way, I was both the audience and performer.
Eventually, the instruments melted. Music went back to nature. Whether you are black, whether you are white, we are all human beings, created by one God. Yes. Why don't we come together, Why love each we? other? Fuck! Why don't we? Fuck! Okay, this is my daughter. But when she was one year, she could, she could play some of my music I've been playing. She was trying to do it. Uh -huh. And even the brothers are here, they, could, they can play. So, but here they are always uh, born with it. My father too, they, uh, he's a xylophonist and he's a carver. He builds xylophones as well. And then he taught me how to play. G-Y-I-L. That's all what you know. This is the name of the instrument. Uh, it brings the people together, actually. We don't normally go to fall a tree or to fell a tree for the wood. We only go in for those, the, 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 the trees that fell down by itself oh, and long, nice. many, many years back. Nice, and nice, then you can nice. get a good, uh, you, get a, you get a good xylophone nice, out of it. Nice. This is a cobweb. Cobweb? Yeah, from the spider. Okay. Yeah. So originally that is what we use. And it vibrates so nice. Yeah, one layer. So how long ago did you stop using the spider web? Maybe, maybe f five, six. Oh, seven. recently. Yeah, recently. recently, not far. Mm -hmm. Now it is at this spot. So that means we have to dig it more, cut it more. Why do you use this type of wood? This type of wood, ancestors, our old people, that's what they use. And it is the best among all the wood because they, they have tried the other woods which are, and they don't give the sound like this one. Yeah. yeah. And then we call this one Liga. Liga. Yeah. And then the, the English call it rosewood. Rosewood? Yeah. So, okay. very good. You the rosewood from the American marimbas comes mostly from Honduras. Exactly. You have them in, the, in North America, or is it South American countries? Yeah. yeah. You know, this is what, what type of skin is it? The skin is um, a, a goat. Goat? Yeah, and then, goat but normally it's cow. Okay. Good. Now it's high. Good. come here and to follow the, 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 the roots of your traditional instrument, you are, you are at the right center. We will be able, I hope, to break down the barriers. Definitely. And once we begin to understand each other, we can live in a, a peaceful, yeah. a peaceful world where people are communicating yeah. instead of shooting each other. We use songs to, com to educate the community. We use songs that entertain the community. We use songs that bring community harmony. And it also foster social solidarity. In our culture, music is part of life. It's part of the everyday life of everybody. You choose to be part of it or you are out of it. If you don't understand it, you can dance. Every song that they will play has its meaning. So you dance, not they will play and you dance anything. 
So you have the implicit journey and the explicit journey, and they're parallel. I go to Ghana and I go to Norway and I go, I go to Brazil because I feel, I feel f fulfilled there. We always seek fulfillment. We're all looking for the wholeness. I guess, in a sense, it's true. We are all explorers, searching for fulfillment of some kind. For me, it's a cultural connection. Maybe it's a need to feel a part of something bigger than myself. For others, like Paul, the search for fulfillment is an internal search. plains of Iceland, his fulfillment comes in the form of a solitary quest to find art in the most unlikely places, extract music from the most unlikely elements. For Paul, the search is the fulfillment. The quest is its own reward. Cecilia, and, and this is a very beautiful tone, is D. And so is your name? Oh! <laughs> yes, so. Wow! This is Sancti Cecilia. since made it as a musician and we finished the set and I went and sat at the table uh, and there was a lot of a lot of people gathered around and your dad came over and he said Mr. Consilio can I see you for a minute <laughs> they're in trouble uh oh and he took me aside and he said do you remember the day that I told you not to encourage my son in music and I said I do Mr. Littner and he said I was wrong. The poem, The Angels, by John Updike, talks about the good gentlemen Brahms, Handel, Mozart, and Scarlatti, and how they lavished measures of light upon us, telling us over and over that there is a realm above this planet of silent compromise. This poem is inspirational to me because it gives me a glimmer of hope that what I'm doing is a bit timeless and otherworldly. And it reminds us that others have been through this path before and devoted the course of their lives' work to music. Thank you. 